Supernova Style Science News with Jelly Seven Sage. I have some huge news. Most likely you've heard some of it, but I'm going to tell you things the other news hasn't. For those that don't know, scientists have found seven Earth-sized planets around one star, and three of them are in a habitable zone. The star is called Trappist-1, and is located in the constellation of Aquarius, 39 light years away from our solar system. That is immensely close. There are only 300 stars that are that close to us. The closest star is 4.5 light years, so this thing is really close but it's still too far to get to with current technology. The star is a cool red dwarf star that is only slightly bigger than Jupiter. When astronomers say cool, they mean this star is only 2,550 Kelvin. Our sun is over twice as hot as 5,772 Kelvin. This star being small and cooler makes it very dim, which makes it easier to see the planets transiting in front of the star. These planets were found by TRAPPIST and NASA, among others. The telescopes involved are, of course, the TRAPPIST, the Spitzer Telescope, the Very Large Telescope, Euchre, the Liverpool Telescope, and the William Herschel Telescope. The way they found the exoplanets was using the transit method. The transit method is when a planet crosses in front of a star, causing a dip in the brightness of the star. Then it will do this at specific intervals. Scientists collect the data and look to see if there's a periodical light dip. If there is, that means that there's probably a planet or planets. This is how they found all these planets around the star, and how they know that they are Earth-sized. They also believe that every planet could have water, but the three most exciting are in the habitable zone. That is the space temperature zone a planet has to be to have liquid water, so it will have a high chance of having life. Now, let's talk about some important facts about the planets that, unless you have been reading in depth, you have not heard. All the planets are in very compact orbits. The distance of every planet to their star is closer than the distance of Mercury to our star. But because it is an ultra-cool star, the energy felt by the planets that affects their temperature is more like this, where the closest planet gets less energy than Mercury gets from our star and the farthest would get as much as our asteroid belt. Two of the planets get close to the energy levels that Earth receives. Another thing is that all of the planets are so close to their star that they are all probably tidally locked, which means that one side of the planet always faces the star, so you have one hot side and one cold side. This means that if there is liquid water on the three planets in the habitable zone, on one side, the water will probably be in one state, like boiling, and on the other it would be frozen or cold liquid. Some people believe life could happen on such a planet in the middle between the hot and colder sides, which is called the Terminator. Another cool thing with this system is Amari Triad and Michael Gillen made an amazing website all about it. It gives the data on all seven planets. The mass of each planet, the amount of time it takes them to orbit, their temperature, and more! And they have videos explaining things about it. Also, you have to check out the one that I really love. They make a song using the transit. How cool is that? They also have these amazing illustrations. So, who did these amazing illustrations? Robert Hurt and Tim Pyle. Pyle has worked on some very famous cartoons like Invader Zim, Jimmy Neutron, and even this little show called SpongeBob. Hurt is an astronomer then now works at Caltech's Infrared Processing and Analysis Center with Pyle. Together, they create beautiful images of exoplanets. But how do they know what the exoplanets look like with only the small amount of data that they have? Well, they talk to the astronomers to understand how the physics would affect the planets and how this would affect their look. The planet that's closest to the star, TRAPPIST-1b, was based on Io and Mercury, so it has many volcanoes and is very hot. The second planet, TRAPPIST-1c, doesn't have as much heat, but it's enough to make it a rocky world with little, if any, water. The third planet, D, is the first in the habitable zone, so the artist added water, but on the cold side, the other side rocky, thinking the heat would be too much. The fourth, E, is most like Earth, but one side is always sunny, while the other side is always dark. The fifth, F, is like Earth, 
but on the star side it would have liquid water, while on the other side the water would be frozen. The sixth planet G is slightly bigger than all the other planets, which would give it a denser atmosphere. It's only green because the artists want to make it look different. It could be a totally different color. The seventh and final planet that we know of is H. It's the hardest to detect, and it's far out from the star, so they made it an ice ball since it would be cold out there. I think more of Ceres with this one. Look at how much research someone has to do to make a pretty good estimate to how an exoplanet would look. But they weren't the only artists to have stuff on this website. There are posters too that compare TRAPPIST-1 to our solar system. They are great learning tools. Most of these posters were made by Amanda J. Smith, the chief graphics technician at the U Institute of Astronomy in Cambridge. The NASA poster was made by Jody Harris, one of the designers at JPL's The Studio, where they imagine what the future could be, and then they draw or talk about it for the engineers and designers to help them and to keep them and the public motivated. There are also stories on the website. One of them is a fan fiction written about being on a planet in TRAPPIST-1 called The Terminator. It was really good. But there is also a comic explaining what the star system is and how they found it in detail. It was also very entertaining. I like the bunny character. All this wonderful art got us thinking. The story writers and artists were very creative and dreamed big and imaginative. And I know a bunch of creative people too. Maybe you're also one. So I have a challenge for you guys. Challenge! I want you to make a story, a drawing, anything creative about this amazing star system. Think of what the plants and animals would look like, the spaceships we would need to get there, and then post an image of your work or a link to it in the comments below. We are looking for all ages, all abilities. We just want you to dream, so show us your imagination. One of the greatest things about a dream is sharing it with someone else. We even put these up on our website with credit. By sharing, you give us permission to post and share the image of or story. And also, tell your friends to join in on the fun. I can't wait to see what you guys will do. I know it will be amazing.